I need to get this fire going because I want to be warm and comfortable tonight. Fall backpacking can sometimes suck. It's cold, the days are short, but on this trip, I'm gonna go over five hacks to stay comfortable and have fun when out on fall backpacking trips. Last year on a trip, pretty much the exact same time of year as this one, mid-October, I had over a foot and a half of snow on the trail and temperatures got down to below minus 20 degrees Celsius. So as you can see, much different conditions today, but it goes to show that in the fall, you can get any different kind of weather. It could be extremely cold. It could even be extremely warm, but because that's important to check the weather before you get out on trail. And I like to check a whole bunch of different apps, but my favorite is Spot WX. It allows you to really pinpoint in on a location and with that, take into account elevation. I've checked a whole bunch of different apps many different times before going on trips and Spot WX has always been the most accurate. Well, it's pretty obvious what the implications might be if it's extremely cold and you're not ready for that. It can also be really uncomfortable if you don't check the weather and it ends up being a lot warmer than you expected it to be. So checking the weather allows you to bring the right gear for the trip and be prepared for the conditions on the trail. And even if you're really diligent about checking the weather before your trip, that doesn't give you the whole picture. You'll know what the conditions are gonna be like for the days you're hiking, but you don't know what may have been happening the days before or weeks before you got out on trail. And that can result in a whole bunch of different things like dried up water sources, snow, mud, or ice. And if you're encountering those kind of different conditions, you may need to bring extra gear or cancel the trip entirely. There's a few different things I like to do in order to check the conditions of the trail. First up, I keep track of the weather for the week before I go out on the trip. Another thing I like to do is check all trails. A lot of people will post trip reports to all trails for popular trails. And another thing you can do is go on Facebook groups or check Instagram. If you search Instagram for the specific trail you wanna do or a location on that trail, and then sort it by most recent, then you may get some good information on what the conditions on the trail are like. As we get into camp for the night, you might be pondering about those last two hacks and thinking to yourself that fall backpacking doesn't sound so great. But let me go over some of the benefits of fall backpacking because honestly, it can be one of the best times of year to go out on a trip. First of all, the fall colors are beautiful. If you're out east, you probably get those nice reds and oranges, but out here in the Canadian Rockies, we get beautiful golden larches. And once the leaves fall off the trees, then you actually get some much better views, especially out east where you have a lot more deciduous trees. If you like to hike fast, there's also no better time than the fall. It's cooler weather and you can just crush miles. And with that cooler weather, you also don't have bugs. If you're a magnet for mosquitoes, fall time might be your favorite time to go backpacking because there's just no bugs out there. And then best of all is just there's no people. <laughs> Once school starts in September, it seems like just no one is thinking about going backpacking anymore. So it's a lot easier to book sites. And then my favorite benefit is that there's just a lot less people out on trail. So you get that nice solitude. Normally I'm not a big fire person for summer backpacking trips, but in the fall, having a fire is awesome. And there's two main reasons why. But first, make sure you check whether there's fire bans going on. Usually there's not in fall, which is really nice because lately the summers have just been fire free, whether you want to have them that way or not. But in the fall, usually the fire bans go away and you can have a fire. So make sure you're checking that before you head out into the backcountry, as well as make sure you're still dousing your fires well and keeping them contained. I'm gonna get this fire started and then we'll go over the two main benefits of having a fire when you're out on a full trip. Looks like we got some flame going here. So first reason why is because it's gonna help keep you warm at night. The temperatures drop really quickly and it has started already. Number two is that it gives you some light. It gives you some light in order to hang out with some friends or just not have to get into your sleeping bag and tent really quickly. A fire is really nice if you have a friend or two with you, but I don't have that on this trip and it's starting to get dark already. It's only 7 p.m. and it's gonna be dark within 20, 30 minutes here. And I'm gonna get to bed and what I like to do in order to kind of pass the time because I have troubles falling asleep that early is I'll bring my phone with me and usually I'll load up some books onto the Kindle app and do some reading or I'll download some movies on Netflix and watch that. So that's a good way to pass the time if it's a little bit darker, a little bit earlier and you don't have anybody with you to, to chat to. If you'd like to know what gear to bring on fall backpacking trips, then go check out a video I'll post right up in the corner there where I talk about the gear that I add to my backpacking kit when going out in the fall. And there's a bunch of nice budget options in there as well. 